Hi guys, Zed here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. As I've already promised, we're gonna change the pitch for the next two episodes. So here we are. I don't have much going on in my workshop, but it should suffice to get us through today's project. I've already given away today's subject in the title, so we're gonna jump straight at it. We're gonna start by building the frame. Yes, there's millions of tutorials out there, so that's why I'm gonna try and keep it brief. Tools we're gonna be needing. Option number one, sliding miter. Option number two, miter box with saw. If you're looking to do this on the cheap, this is the way to go. I'm using plain all-round timber as I'm too lazy, plus I don't have the equipment to plane it myself. Dimensions of the timber are 70 mm by 45 mm by 2.4 meters long. Before we start, I'd like to pick your brain on something. Which one would you rather use? Measuring tape or folding ruler? Personally, I've been using this for a long time for doing woodworking projects and I think it works very well for me. So, let me know down in the comments which ones would you rather use. We'll start with cutting the sides of our frame. So, we measure three times and we cut only once. Easy to say. All done. It's all nice 45 degrees everywhere. All we've got left to do is do the grooves where the perspex panel and the backing is going to be. For that, we're going to be using the table saw and this height and depth gauge. say that the idea for this project came after I saw something similar a few years back on Pinterest. This is one of my dearest projects I have done so far for my daughter and I thought it's well worth to document it. Should you decide to do something similar yourself, I highly recommend you use quality die cast cards. There are plenty of choices out there but I mainly use Hot Wheels, Maisto and Mattel. The difference at the end will be noticeable. It will make the difference between a high-end product and a mediocre one. You will laugh, but it took me almost two years to source them out as I wanted to do it on a minimum budget. My favorite spots were car boot sales and eBay job lots. After everything is dried out, we set the center of our first batch of cars using a form you have handy. In my case, I used the bowl. To make this process simple and repeatable, I nailed the center of the circle and using a string and a pencil, I kept on marking row by row at even distances. There is one trick here I suggest you should consider. It will not be sufficient to place glue on the underside of each car. If you want to last, try and force glue inside all four wheel arches of the car. Once glue is inside, it will act as a hook holding the car in place. Not sure if my glue sticks were poor quality, but only by applying glue to the bottom made the cars to start detaching in less than 24 hours. After you put all the sides of the frame together, there is no way you'll be able to access the cars and make corrections. Personally, after gluing everything together, I left the frame with the cars facing down almost a week just to be precautious.
is a little bit heavy, so I used the kit with hanging accessories I bought online to secure it on the wall. It will give you the peace of mind that your project is safe long term, plus the solution looks professional as well. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button and I will strive to continue creating good content. Thank you for watching.